During this period of rapid anthropogenic climate change, it's critical that we can understand and predict the changing distributions of plant and animal species to guide conservation. We know that when species face rising temperatures, they seek thermal refuge by moving to cooler habitats, moving to higher latitudes, higher elevations, or deeper seas. But after decades of developing sophisticated climate change models of future species ranges, when it comes to backtesting these models against historic events, there are widespread inadequacies. Species movements don't perfectly track temperature, and yet physical barriers, competition and predation don't quite account for this discrepancy either. Whether a species shifts its range or not may depend on its underlying physiology to cope with the conditions of a new habitat. These conditions include day length, seasonality, available light, available oxygen, UV radiation, air pressure, water pressure, and ocean acidity. For example, as flying insects move to cooler, higher elevations, the lower air pressure makes flying more energetically expensive. But we don't yet know how this increased energy expenditure will impact on different species' reproductive success. And as mammals move away from the equator to higher, cooler latitudes, they will experience a change in the length of days and nights, especially during the winter season, where day length is much shorter. If these mammals cannot migrate or hibernate, shorter days will mean less time to successfully hunt or forage to acquire the energy needed for survival. For aquatic species moving to cooler, deeper seas, we need to better understand how the reduced light will impact on visual hunters, as well as the risks of hypoxia and increased pressure. Authors of this paper have identified research priorities for better understanding various physiological responses to changing environmental conditions. They highlight the urgent need for better communication and collaboration among ecologists studying the patterns of species as they respond to climate change and the physiologists who are studying the mechanisms that control such movements. By bridging scientific fields that may not have traditionally worked together and moving away from an overly simplistic temperature-centric view of species on the move, we may be able to improve our overall understanding of why organisms live where they do. Armed with that knowledge, we will be in a better position to develop the right conservation strategies to reduce the risk of extinctions induced by climate change.